Hi everybody, it's Crystal. So today I'm gonna to show you how to crochet this blanket. So it's rather large and it's very soft because of the yarn that it's made with. Um, and it's very, very pretty, as you can see. Um, and it does have a ribbed border on it. Um, now, this particular blanket is made with the um, 3D wavy shell stitch. Of course, you don't have to use it to make a blanket. I'll show you how to, to make it, and you can use it to make anything that you want. But the shells, they kind of uh, three-dimensional looking. It's probably hard to tell with the yarn that I use. The yarn's a little bit fuzzy, but it's so soft. So pretty, too. I like it a lot. Very, very snuggly. My little Morky's taking it over like it is. He claims them all. So yes, I'm going to show you how to make this. So remember, you don't have to use the yarn that I use or anything like this. And you can make it any size that you want because I'll give you the multiple. And you can use this stitch for something else if you'd like. All right? So uh, this particular blanket here that you see, it's very, very big. And my desk is very, very small. Is approximately 60 inches um, in width and about 67 inches tall. Um, it is made with the uh, Caron Colorama Halo, the perfect phasing yarn. So it's the one that uh, it phases out slowly. So that's kind of how this one did, I guess. That's a purple, actually a purple and orange one. I bought off Hershner's. Uh, when it was on clearance, it was like $3 a cake. So it made a nice, I'm going to set it to the side. It made a nice uh, blanket. It's beautiful. Normally I would donate that, but my, like I said, my Morky claimed it as his own. So now it's his. So I can tell you a little bit about uh, how much yarn I use. And um, we can go from there. So... This is the yarn that I use. Remember, you do not have to use this yarn. You can use any yarn that you like, and you can use any weight of yarn that you like because you can chain in the multiple that I give you to your desired length. Um, but we'll just go over what I used. Um, this is a bulky, classified as a bulky five weight. Of course, remember, you don't have to use that. It's 71 acrylic, 18 nylon, and 11 polyester. That stuff is so soft. If you've never felt it, it's beautiful. I have many things made out of this yarn on my channel. I really, really like it. The color is called magenta and mandarin. They have so many pretty colors. Now, there are 481 yards or 440 meters per cake. Um, and it took about... Um, almost seven cakes to complete that particular blanket. So, 481 yards and almost seven cakes, you know, just, um, you know, maybe 50, 50 yards left of, of the, of the, uh, seventh one. So, that's how much you would need of a bulky five. To complete this project of course if you're going to be using a smaller weight yarn and you want to make it the same size as me, as me you'll need um more yarn but uh like i said you can use any particular yarn that you'd like and then for the bulky five i did use a uh, size j which is a six millimeter crochet hook now if you're using a different size yarn um i would probably just go with the recommended hook size this one was a six, used to six. So that's probably what I would do. Um, and special thanks to my friend Deb for helping me with this blanket. Excellent, as always, Deb. Thank you very much. Um, so this stitch, the wavy 3D shell stitch, it is done in a multiple of four plus two. Which, I'm going to show you with a different yarn because that yarn, it's fuzzy, you know, you're not going to really be able to see it. Um, let me get a lighter color yarn here. Alright, so this is a, some scrap yarn. I believe it's uh, Red Heart Ombre. But anyways, I'm going to show you with this scrap yarn here. So that, that fuzzy yarn, this is a four weight that I'm using here. 
So this stitch is done in a multiple of four plus two, which means that if you want to do it a different size than me, you just chain in multiples of four. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and, and so on, until you get it as big as you want it to be. And then you add two more after that to your base chain. So that's a multiple of four plus two. Okay, so following along with me, you want to start out with a chain of 150 stitches. 148 is the multiple of 4, plus 2 more at the end would make a total of 150. And I'm going to show you on a smaller scale here. So we'll go ahead and get started. So for row 1, we are going to do a double crochet in the 4th chain from our hook. So we never count the one, count the one that's on our hook. 1, 2, 3, and then the fourth, we do a double crochet. And then we're going to work across and we're going to put one double crochet in every a single stitch until you get to the end of the row. So row one is just one double in every stitch and I'll meet back up with you when you make it to the end. All right, so when you make it to the end of row one, you should have a total now, if you're following along with me, 148 stitches. So this little chain here, this little guy here, he counts as a stitch, all right? So counting him, you'll have a total of 148. If you did a different number than me, you will have two less stitches than what you started with. All right, now let's go ahead and start row two. Row two is we are going to chain one and turn our work. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch, doesn't count as anything. So we'll just pretend like it's not even there. And we're gonna go ahead and put a double crochet right there into that first stitch. And for row two, we're just gonna put one double crochet in every stitch until we get to the end of the row. So row two is just a double crochet row as well. We're putting one into every stitch until we make it to the end of row two. All right, so when you're coming to the end of row two, don't forget that this chain right here on the end counts as a stitch, so we just go into the top of that and double crochet, and you still should have the same number of stitches that you did before. So if you're following along with me, you'll have the 148 stitches. And now we're gonna go ahead and start row three. So row three starts the repeat rows for the pattern. It's rows three, four, five, and six. So it is a four row repeat. So why don't we begin row three? We are going to chain one and turn our work. That chain one does not count as a stitch. We're gonna put a half double crochet into the first six stitches. So this very first one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're doing half doubles. So we're gonna yarn over, go into that very first stitch. We got three loops. We yarn over and go through all three. So that's our half double. And we need to do that six times. So that was one, go to the next stitch, two, the next one, three and the next one here is four there's five and there's six so we just did six half doubles in a row now we're going to chain four one two three four and we're going to turn our work now to the back just like that and we're gonna count back four stitches and we're going to slip stitch into that fourth stitch. So one, two, three, four. So slip stitch into that fourth one, counting back one, two, three, four. Slip stitch into that fourth stitch. Just like that. And then we're gonna work a chain of two one, 
two, and we're going to turn our work back around to the front. So that gives us a space to work our uh, shell into. That's going to make it look kind of 3, 3D-ish. So now that we're back around front, we're going to put eight double crochets into this chain space that we just made. Just go right into the space and work eight doubles. So there's one, two, and three. Sorry about that. Four. seven and there is eight so eight double crochets into that space is considered the shell for this particular um, stitch so now we're going to start the repeat of row uh, three we're going to do a half double crochet into the next four stitches so don't go into this one because you can see there is a half double there so we're just going to yarn over go into the next one and half double. There's one half double. Go to the next one. Two half double. The next one. Three half double. And the next one is four half doubles. So we only did four half doubles this time. And we are going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to turn our work to the back side again just like this and we're going to slip stitch into in between the half double crochet and the last double crochet made so here is the last double crochet made and here is the last over here in this section here's the last half double we kind of just want to slip stitch into this little spot here Just like that. I'll show you that again here in a minute, but just like that. And then we're going to chain two, one, two, and turn our work back around front. And now we have a chain there in the back, and now we can put our shell into it. So we can work eight double crochets into this chain space. And there's eight there it is now we're going to repeat that again so we're going to put a half double crochet into the next four stitches so we went that has a stitch in it so we're going to go into the next one and there is one half double into the next one makes two half double the next one is three half doubles and the next one is four half doubles just like that now we're going to do our chain four one two three four turn our work round back and we slip stitch again i'll show you where we're going to slip stitch we come over here to where we just made our last shell and you can see this half double crochet here that this set of shells is setting on we're going to take your hook go in between those those spots right there in between that double crochet come around and in between that half double like that and then we just slip stitch it right there do our chain two turn our work back around front and now we have our chain four space for our shell again eight double crochets how easy is this this is so this is very very easy and this is the hardest row and it's not even hard you got this there's three think of all the endless color combinations you could change colors of your row
There it is. And that's what we're going to keep repeating. Let's do it one more time. Let's do it. I'll repeat it again. Okay, half double crochet into the next four. So there's one, two, three, and there's four. And then we do a chain of four. One, two, three, four. Turn our work around back. And I think that this would be the part that everybody finds maybe the hardest, but it's not hard, trust me. You just come over here to where the shell is, and there's this half double here and the shell here. I kind of just go right into that chain space or in between that last half double and that, um, or in between this last double of the shell and the half double here. It's kind of just in the chain space to tell you the truth that's what I do it's just easier just go right in there slip stitch it right there chain two turn your work back round front and there you go now that's looking good it's so pretty and now we have a chain space for our next shell eight doubles so we're gonna keep repeating this pattern until we have two stitches that remain. One, two, three, four. Hope I got eight in all of them. <laughs> all right, there's, there's eight. All right, I'm gonna do it one more time for those that, that might need it. If not, you guys can switch me off and hit me up at the next row but again one more time we're going to do a, double, a half double into the next four there's one two three and there's four chain four turn around back and then right here is our shell we just did just slip stitch right here into this chain space so just like that there we go chain two turn work back around to the front and now you have your chain space for your eight doubles so we're going to repeat this until we have uh two stitches that remain and that's where i'll be back up with you when we have two stitches left all right all right, so I have made it to my last two stitches and we're just going to end row three by putting a half double crochet into our last two stitches. And that will end row three. Oops. Just like that. Oh, wow. That's really pretty. As much as I love that that uh, fuzzy yarn that I use, it's really, the definition of the stitch is really showing up a lot better on a non-fuzzy yarn. I wouldn't change it because my puppy really loves that fuzzy yarn, but this, it's really gorgeous on a, a yarn that's not fuzzy. Um, it's gorgeous both ways, but it's showing up a little bit better now. Now we're going to begin row four, and we're going to chain one and turn our work. So... We're going to be working in these half double crochets here that are behind the shells. So we're going to start off that chain one does not count as a stitch. So we're going to put a double crochet. This is going to be a double crochet row. We're going to put a double crochet into the first two stitches. There's one and two. Okay. And then the shell here, the four half double crochets that are behind it. One, two, three, four. We're gonna put a double crochet in those four half double crochet. Those four half doubles. There's one, two, three, and there's four. And that's what we're going to do all the way across for row four, is we're going to be putting four half double crochets. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Four double crochets 
in the four half double crochets that are behind each of these shells. I'm not a fan of half doubles. I can never tell One, two, three, four. where they start. They're odd because they have that third loop. There's one, two, there's three, and here's four. And again, we're just going to repeat that. We're going to jump over here to our next shell. So these four half doubles that are behind it, we're going to put a double in each one of those. And we're going to repeat this pattern of putting a double crochet in each of the four half double crochets that are that are uh, behind each of these shells until we get to the last two stitches of our row. Here's my next shell. You can see my half doubles here. There's one. Two, three, and four. And I'm going to repeat this pattern um, for row four, and I'll meet up with you at our last two stitches of a row. All right, when you make it to the end of row four, you should have two stitches that remain. Go ahead and put a double crochet into the last two stitches. That'll end row four, and you should have the same number of stitches that you did on rows um, down here, rows one and two, which we had 148. So if you're following along with me, that's what you should have. That is the end of row four. It is so easy. From here on out, row five, we're going to chain one and turn. Now, row five and six are actually the exact same thing. So row five and six, what we're going to do is, we're on row five, we are going to double crochet right back into that first stitch and we're just going to work one double crochet in every single stitch until we get to the end of the row just row five is just a double crochet row and so is row six and that is the repeat rows so i'm going to do one double crochet in every stitch across when i make it to the end of row five i will chain one and turn my work and for row six, I will repeat row five, putting one double crochet in every stitch. Still should have the same number of double crochets. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish out row five, and then I'm gonna do row six. That will end the repeat, and that is where I'll meet back up with you. How easy is this? Super easy, and yet it is so pretty. All right, I'm gonna finish this out, then I'll do row six, and I'll meet back up with you in just a second all right made it to the end of row six and that is the repeat rows three four five and six is so easy so for row seven you would just repeat row three you chain one and turn and you would do this shell stitch row again and like i said that's probably the hardest row and it's not even hard so you just keep repeating rows three four five and six until you get to your desired size um following along with me uh the blanket that you see has 24 shell rows so 24 rows of shells is what that blanket has um you can do it however many that you like you just keep repeating rows three through six until you get to however big it is that you want it to be whether it be a blanket um a scarf anything that you want to make with it however big you want it to be um, now, if you want to put a border on your blanket, you can. You don't have to. Some people like borders, some people don't. You know, my favorite border is a simple single crochet border. That's definitely something that you can do. But that's not what this blanket has. So I will show you what this blanket has. A basic uh, ribbing border. So um, it's not anything that you have to do, but if it's something that you'd like to do, I'll show you how, how you do it. So you get it as big as you want, all right? Um, the blanket that you've seen, like I said, was uh, has 24 rows of shells, ended on a row six, ended out row six, and then uh, turn your work here after row six. 
And then uh, for the border, what we want to do first is an edging row. I always like to do an edging row. It gets, before I put a border on, it gets all of your corners and your sides nice and clean and straight. That way it prepares for a border. So we'll go ahead and start off and we're going to put three single crochets into this very first stitch. One, two, three. So that's a corner right there. And then we're just going to work one single crochet in every stitch until we get to the next corner. Remember this is what I call an edging row. It's the row I do before I put a border on. I do it almost every single time I, put, I border a blanket. I have to put it an edging row on. I don't know why I have to. I have to because I like clean edges <laughs> whenever I put a border on. So and you just put one single crochet in every stitch till you get to, to the end over here. And some borders require a certain amount of stitches in between them. So the edging row is um, a great way to get, achieve that as well. Um, now this particular border that, I, that I'm doing does require you to have an odd number of stitches between each of the corner stitches. All right, so I'll show you what we're gonna do in case we don't have that. Now you need to have an odd number in between all on all four sides of the corner stitches. Okay, so I'm coming up to my last stitch of the row. This will be a corner stitch. So I need to have an odd number between the corners. So we don't count the three that are in the corner, all right? Don't count those. So one, two, three. We're not counting those. But we want to count after that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now I actually have an, and I'm not counting the one, the three that I'm going to put in this corner. I actually have an even number of stitches, all right? So what I can do to correct that is I can just put two into the last stitch to make it an odd number, or I could decrease over the last two. I'm just going to put an extra one here. Now I have an odd number of stitches in between my corners. So remember, we don't count the three that's in this corner. And now I have an odd number, not, not counting those three. And we're not going to count the three that goes in this corner either. So we're going to put three into this corner stitch here. And now we're going to work down the side. Now the sides are going to be a little bit harder because there's no, uh, you're going working into the sides of double crochets and the sides of half doubles. But you still need to maintain an odd number of stitches, not counting the three that we put in each of the corners. All right, so not counting these three stitches, I'm just going to kind of evenly space out single crochets all the way down. But I want to make sure that I keep an odd number when I get to down to the bottom. Of course, yours will be a lot bigger than mine. All right, so I have an odd number now, um, not counting those three. And I'm down here at the corner stitch. This is the, our tail where we began. And in this stitch, we don't count in any of these stitches as part of the odd. We did do three into this corner. One, two, three. Now, since the top hat, we had to put an extra stitch in the top, we know we're gonna have to put an extra stitch in the bottom as well to make it an odd number. So you can just put an extra stitch wherever you want. Um, just make sure that you have an odd number. We're putting one single crochet in every stitch across. Make sure you have an odd number in between the corner stitches. We do not count any of the three stitches of the corner as part of the 
odd number that we need. So anywhere along here, you can just add an extra stitch. So right here, I'm just going to put two singles into that one. And that's not going to, you know, that's how you, that's how you make it work. You know, when, when you need a certain amount of stitches, sometimes it just, the number you started with, it doesn't work out. Well, you, you can easily fix it. I just fixed it right there by putting two there. And it's, no one's going to pay no mind and no one's going to know anything different. It's not even wrong. That's just how you fix it. That's how you, that's how it's done. So there we go. So I'm going to continue across until I make it to the corner. And I'll put three single crochets in that corner. And then I'll be able to work up the side, my last side, maintaining an odd number up that side as well. And this will be the finishing row before we do the border. Okay, I'm coming to the last. This is the last stitch right here. You want to put three single crochets into that one, two, and three. All right. And then we guys got to go up this side, evenly spacing out single crochets, keeping an odd number of single crochets and not counting the three that's in the corner. So you just do it the same way you did the other side. All right, I'll meet back up with you at our starting point. All righty, I've made it here to the end and I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch into my first single crochet. All right, now we can start the border that I did on that blanket. Okay, row one. What we're going to do is slip stitch to that middle stitch um, of the three. All right, we're just going to slip stitch one time over. It will be in the middle middles of that of those three that's in the corner. And what we're going to do is chain one, which does not count as a stitch. We're going to go back into that middle stitch and we're going to work two double crochets. There's one. And there's two and then we're going to chain two. And we're going to go back into that middle stitch and work two more double crochets just like that and now we're just going to work one double crochet across in every stitch until we get to the next uh the middle stitch of the next group of three and we'll do the same thing two doubles chain two and two doubles. We're going to do that in the middle stitch on each corner of that group of three single crochets from the previous row. So and then we're just doing one double crochet in between. All right I've made it to the next corner and I'm at the middle stitch of my group of three so I'm going to do the same thing I did at the other one. It's going to be two doubles into that stitch a chain of two and two doubles back into the same stitch and we're just going to keep repeating this pattern all the way around and we start off putting one double crochet in every stitch until we get to the middle stitch of our next corner where we do the same thing all right so when we make it back around we'll have four chain two spaces now that's going to be acting as our corners okay so I'm going to continue this pattern and I'll see you back at the beginning. All right, I'm coming here to the end of this is row one of the border. I'm just going to end by slip stitching into my first double crochet. Just like that. Now, if you want to go ahead and start row two, so rows two and three are the same of the border. We're going to slip stitch over to the chain two space. We're going to chain one and in that chain two space we're going to work two doubles there's one and there's two and then we're going to chain two and we're going to work two more doubles into that chain two space so this is row two of the border and row three is done the exact same way um, and what we're going to do now is we are going to work a front post double crochet around the next stitch. So we're going to yarn over 
And instead of doing a double crochet in the top, we're going to do it around the post of the stitch. Like that. And then the next stitch is going to be just a regular double crochet in the top. And then a front post double crochet around the next. And a regular double crochet in the next. And we're just going to repeat this pattern. The front post double crochet. And just regular double crochet into the next until we get to our next chain 2 space. Front post double. Regular double. Front post double. Regular double. Repeat this and I'll meet back up with you at our next chain two space. You can see that's creating some ribbing. All right, when you make it to your next chain two space, your last stitch should have been a front post double crochet and we're gonna go into the chain two and we're gonna work two doubles, a chain two, and two doubles. And now we're gonna start again doing what we just did front post double crochet around the next stitch and a regular double crochet into the next front post double around the post of the next stitch and a regular double crochet into the next and we're going to repeat this pattern all the way around every chain two space we'll get two doubles chain two and two doubles and I will meet back up with you at our starting point. All right, when you're coming to the end of row two, again, you should have ended with a front post double crochet. Uh, what should have been your last stitch, and we'll just go ahead and slip stitch into our first double crochet. And then you can repeat row two for however many rows of ribbing that you want. Now, don't be alarmed if your ribbing starts to flip. That's what ribbing does. It's normal for it to flip. So you want to slip stitch over to your chain two space. Now for the blanket that you've seen, I repeated row two one more time. So I did another row the exact same way. And you can do it as many times as you like. Now once you get as many rows of ribbing on as you'd like, um, you would in the same way and in, to kind of help with this uh, flipping, what you'd want to do for your final row is slip stitch over into the chain space in chain one and you'd want to put four double or four i'm sorry four single crochets into the chain space and then when we did we would just work don't forget this guy here one single crochet in every stitch all the way around but working four singles in each of the chain two spaces this would be our final row of the border to help combat that flipping of the ribbing it's just this row of single crochet all the way around working four in each corner and when you make it back around, you would just end with a slip stitch into your first single crochet and tie off. Just like that. And that is how that blanket is done. Now remember, you can use a different type of border. You can use this stitch for something else. But this is kind of what the border looks like once it's finished. I think it turned out quite nice. Like I said, my puppy claimed it, so I'm gonna let him have it. It's now Georgie's blanket, my baby Georgie. And I hope that you enjoyed my tutorial. I love this yarn, it's so soft, but like I said, it, it really did show up the stitches quite well in that regular yarn too. So I can't wait to see what you do with this. If you don't make a blanket with it, I'd love to see what you make with it. Show me on my Facebook page. Um, there's a link below in the description box. Everybody there is so nice. It's the nicest Facebook page you're ever gonna find. Everybody is so helpful and so kind. There's no meanness at all. And if there is, trust me, we get rid of it and it doesn't happen again. 
but it rarely happens. It doesn't happen because we have such kind people on there. Everybody is so helpful. We'd love it for you to join us and show us what you make from my stitch tutorials or show us what you make from any of my any of my videos at all. Whether you whether you do it the exact same or you're changing up um, in different colors or different borders or whatever it is you make, you know. Um, that has to do with my vids. We'd, we'd really like to see it over there. So if you enjoyed this and you were able to follow along, don't forget to hit that like button. And um, it really helped me out if you leave a comment below. You don't have to leave any type of comment of praise or anything. Just a simple hi would be just fine. I'd, I'd really appreciate it. So thank you all for watching. And don't forget to check out my hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, hundreds, beyond hundreds of free crochet tutorials. I have anything that you could ever want to make and multiples of them. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet, all right? I'll see you on my next one. Take care, everybody. Bye, guys.